Okay, folks, here we go. Microanatomy of the urinary system, which means for us, the nephron. I am gonna ask you guys to draw along with me. I know I'm not there in person to sort of lovingly bully you into doing it, but um, since I started having students draw the nephron along with me, the test scores really improved on this. So please, please, please do it with me. We're gonna start by just drawing the tubules of the nephron proper. So I'm gonna do that in sort of a dark blue color. You can start by drawing sort of the backward funky C, and then I'm gonna erase a tiny bit right there. I need for you guys to imagine that this structure is, right, you have to sort of think of it as being three-dimensional. So it's, it's a cup-like structure, and this is called, sometimes referred to as Bowman's capsule. Um, I prefer the term glomerular capsule because it's more anatomically accurate. The glomerular capsule, is a three-dimensional structure, right? It's a sort of a cup-like structure with a tiny opening right in here, and then a larger opening in the back, and it leads into this tiny twisty tube. That tiny twisty tube is attached to the glomerular capsule. So we say it's proximal, twisty, turny, convoluted, teeny tiny tube, tubule. The proximal convoluted tubule. That leads into this loop that dips way down into the medulla of the kidney. So let's see. And this loop is called, I call it the nephron loop. Some people call it the nephron loop, but some people call it the loop of Henley because he's the dude that first described it. Um, nephron loop, I think, is easier to remember and also more accurate. This, the nephron loop dips down into the medulla and then in some nephrons and comes back up into the cortex into another twisty turny tube which is much farther away. Actually, let's not say much farther away. We'll say it is not directly connected to the glomerular capsule. So, but it is also a tiny tube and it is also twisty turny. So it is the distal convoluted tubule. Right, and remember in the last video, I said there are millions of these in each kidney, these nephrons. Each of them plugs into a larger tube called the collecting duct. And each collecting duct is going to plug into, into a papilla, which is hooked into a minor calyx, which hooks into a major calyx, which empties into the renal pelvis, which then allows urine to flow into the ureter. And each of these little areas where I've left an opening is a place where another nephron is gonna plug in into the collecting duct. Now we have to draw some blood vessels, right? Because I said in the first video that the, the function of the kidney was to filter blood, and in fact, the neph is the filtering unit, the unit of function. So we've gotta get blood vessels in here. We have an arterial that carries blood into a specialized capillary bed. So this capillary bed, which I'm just gonna draw like this, that capillary bed is called the glomerulus. And I believe glomerulus means ball of yarn. That's sort of what it looks like in the histology, if not in my picture. The arterial that carries blood into it 
is called the afferent arterial. It's the, uh, right, remember afferent, we came across that word when we talked about the nervous system. So the incoming sensory information is part of an afferent pathway. Now we're using afferent to mean the same sort of thing. It's the incoming blood that's flowing into this tangle of capillaries called the glomerulus. It turns out there's also an efferent arterial, which is why, right, we're a systemic circulation, so red means oxygen-rich uh, blood. So the efferent arterial, right, is, remember the word efferent in, in the context of the nervous system means the outgoing information. So the motor side of things is referred to as the efferent pathway in the nervous system. And here we have an efferent arterial exiting the glomerular capsule. That then is going to give rise to a whole bunch of blood vessels that wrap around tubules of the nephron. And you can, the sort of exactly how you draw these is not important. These capillaries wrap around the tubule of the nephron. And so we call these the peritubular capillaries. Peri means around and they are around the tubes, and they are capillaries. The afferent arterial, right, if you trace it back far enough, you will come to the renal artery, and if you follow the peritubular capillaries, you'll come to venules, and then arcuate veins, and interlobular veins, and eventually you will come to the renal vein. And you know, when you're looking at the nephron labeling practice in the lab for this week, don't worry about the arcuate vessels and interlobular vessels. Just focus on the largest ones, which are the renal artery and the renal vein, and then the smaller ones, the afferent arterial, the glomerulus, the efferent arterial, peritubular capillaries, which lead to a renal venule of one kind or another, and then to the renal vein. All right, so why is knowing this microanatomy so important? Well, it, it turns out that the formation of urine is a three-step process, and different things happen in different locations. All right, so to review, the glomerular capsule is where the nephron if there's any place you could say it begins, that's where it begins, leads into the proximal convoluted tubule. Proximal because it is directly connected to the glomerular capsule. That leads into the nephron loop, which then leads into the distal convoluted tubule, which is abbreviated in this drawing, and then into the collecting duct. Collecting duct plugs into the minor calyx, right? And so right in this view, we have a really simplified renal slice through the kidney where we've got corte here and medulla here. So one of the things to be really careful about when you're thinking about the nephron is that there is no particular, go back here for a sec, there's no particular way that the glomerular capsule points, right? So it could be pointing up like this, right? And then you get this kind of a thing, or it could be facing down, Sometimes the distal convoluted tubule wraps around and comes very close to the glomerular capsule before going into the collecting duct. So your strategy, the strategy you want to use is to focus on what's coming in to the glomerular capsule, what's going out, tracing to the peritubular capillaries. So the nephron filters blood and creates urine in the process. So you've got blood that has come away from the heart, right? It's shown red here because it's more systemic circulation, but it's high in waste products. Um, high in oxygen, high in waste products. Um, blood 
that leaves the kidney is clean, meaning low in waste products, but it's now also uh, lower in oxygen as well. One of the things to understand about the glomerulus is that the arterioles that feed into it and that leave it are different sizes. And that gives rise to something really special that happens within the glomerulus. So the afferent arteriole, in this image is here, is wider than the arteriole, efferent arteriole, that exits the glomerular capsule. And that has the function of, of increasing the pressure within the glomerular capillaries. And that's critical to what happens in this space. Right, so we've got the glomerular capsule here giving rise to the proximal convoluted tubule. And I'm going to show you a slightly more complicated picture of the glomerular capillaries in a second. But what happens in this space, because of this high blood pressure and the special structure of these capillaries, is that a lot of material is pushed out of the glomerular capillaries and into this cup-like structure, the glomerular capsule or Bowman's cap. We call that material filtrate. It's not urine quite yet, but that filtrate trickles into the proximal convoluted tubule. The efferent arterial, the exiting arterial, branches to become the peritubular capillary network. So peri means around, around the tubes and their capillaries, right? Sometimes these are shown as true capillary beds where you've got blue and red. Other times like this, they're not. That blood that leaves the capillary beds enters venules, which transition into veins, and eventually that blood will end up in the renal vein. So now let's do some labeling, because this is the kind of thing you're going to be confronted with for the practical and also for the exam. Don't get intimidated by it, right? Follow the path, right? So if you know that blood is moving away from the heart, you know that it's arterial blood of one kind or another. And if it is entering the glomerular capsule, right? I always start with the glomerular capsule because you can't miss it usually. So if this is the capsule, that means that this arterial that's entering right here has got to be the afferent arterial. Whether it's drawn larger or not, if you can tell that it is coming off of an artery and it's the one that's first entering, it's got to be the afferent arterial. Right then we've got the glomerulus within the capsule and the efferent arterial is the one that exits. Now, if I can't, if I, there's nothing that tells me color to tell me that a set of blood vessels is artery or vein, so I can't trace it that way. I can always look for the peritubular capillaries because that capillary bed comes from or comes out of the efferent or exiting arterial. So if I find that and I trace my way back, right? And if you're looking at a black and white image, you might actually have to stick your pencil down on the paper or borrow your kids' crayons or colored pencils and color the nephron one color, color blood vessels another to, to, to get the hang of it. So we've got aritubular capillaries, which then are going to come into a renal vein. And again, I just want you to know the artery versus vein because you'll get that later. So I've labeled all the blood vessels. So now I can go in and focus on the actual tubules of the nephron. So I'm going to start with the cup because I can always see that. So that's the glomerular capsule. 
right, or Bowman's capsule, and directly connected to that, I know, is the proximal convoluted tubule. That means this has got to be the proximal convoluted tubule. And if I just keep tracing that around, right, I can find where it goes down. So that's the loop of Henle or the nephron loop. And that will give rise to the distal convoluted tubule, right? Remember I said that sometimes the distal convoluted tubule makes its way for reasons that we're not, don't really cover in this course, ends up um, coming back around to, to the glomerular capsule. And that's going to plug into the collecting duct, which flows into the renal papilla, into minor calyx, major calyx, from the major calyx into the renal pelvis, from the renal pelvis into the ureter, from the ureter into the bladder, from the bladder into the urethra, and then into the pot. 